One of the most inspiring family ceremonies is that of a wedding, when a man and a woman become husband and wife. But today, the institution of marriage is under attack. Many flaunt the attitude, we can have sex any way we want it without anyone stopping us. Incredibly, much of society even supports and encourages any kind of sex outside of marriage. Do moral laws regarding sex even exist? What does the Bible say? Is sex sin? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World presents Roderick C. Meredith, Richard Ames, John O'Gwen. Bringing you the good news of your future in tomorrow's world. This week, Richard Ames asks, Is sex sin? And now, Richard Ames. Warm greetings to you all. The wedding ceremony is an inspiring event. An adult man and woman come to love one another and commit themselves in marriage for life. Marriage and the family have always been the building blocks and foundation for society and for nations. The bride and groom make a vow in public to be faithful to one another. The presiding minister or official might say, Marriage is a natural union, but a divine institution ordained of God. The Bible says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Family and friends rejoice and celebrate along with the bride and groom. The wedding is the beginning of a new loving family unit. The honeymoon, as it's called, is a time for the husband and wife to enjoy their God-given privilege of sex in marriage. In fact, your Bible features one whole book picturing the romance of a man and woman. That book is the Song of Solomon, also called the Song of Songs. As the Holman Bible Dictionary comments, quote, The song itself gives expression to a uniquely biblical perspective on sexual love. Like Genesis 2, verses 23 and 25, the song celebrates God's gift of bodily love between man and woman, end of quote. The book is organized as a drama. Some analysts observe three main characters in the book. Solomon, as symbolic of the world, is seen as tempting the shepherdess with his worldly luxury, while she remains faithful to her unseen shepherd, symbolically the Lord. As we'll see later, a loving, intimate relationship between a man and a woman in marriage symbolizes the intimate relationship between Christ and the church. The New King James Version introduces the Song of Solomon with this comment, quote, Allegorically, it pictures Israel as God's betrothed bride. Hosea 2, verses 19 and 20, and the church as the bride of Christ. As human life finds its highest fulfillment in the love of man and woman, so spiritual life finds its highest fulfillment in the love of God for his people and Christ for his church. End of quote. The Bible is very plain. God created sex for a wonderful purpose, and the Creator gives us the principles for enjoying an intimate, loving relationship in marriage. And he also warns us that the wrong use of sex produces severe penalties. On today's program, we'll be discussing the biblical approach to sex, and we'll be answering the question, is sex sin? Is premarital sex okay? Is experimenting with perverse sexual practices okay? Is adultery okay? You may be surprised what the Bible has to say. We'll also be offering you a free booklet that will give you the keys to a joyous marriage. Be sure to write down the address and phone number to request your free copy. You can also order this booklet, Build a Joyous Marriage, on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. While the divorce rate in the United States has recently been declining somewhat, the statistics are still sobering. A Time Magazine article titled, Divorce the Debate, gave the following divorce data. Quote, more than 40% of first marriages end in divorce. 
total number of divorced adults grew from 4.3 million in 1970 to 20 million today. Married population dropped from 72% in 1970 to 60% today, end of quote. The United States is not the only country with a high divorce rate. The top eight nations with the highest rate of divorces as a percentage of all marriages are as follows. Russia, 65%. Sweden, 64%. Finland, 56%. Britain, 53%. The United States, 49%. Canada, 45%. France, 43%, and Germany, 41%. In June 2001, the total population of Australia over the age of 15 was 15.4 million, an increase of 38% since 1981. The Australian Bureau of Statistics, ABS, reports that the 2001 population of 15.4 million, quote, was comprised of 4.9 million never married, 8.4 million married, 940,000 widowed, and 1.1 million divorced persons. The largest proportional increase over the past 20 years was in the divorced population, increasing by 172% between 1981 and 2001, end of quote. Our modern Western world increasingly rejects the Ten Commandments and continues its slide into immorality. Just how bad is it? The Barner Research Group surveyed 10 moral behaviors among Americans. In its November 3, 2003 report titled, Morality Continues to Decay, Barner Research reported, quote, Of the 10 moral behaviors evaluated, a majority of Americans believed that each of three activities were morally acceptable. Those included gambling, 61%, cohabitation, 60%, and sexual fantasies, 59%. Nearly half of the adult population felt that two other behaviors were morally acceptable, having an abortion, 45%, and having a sexual relationship with someone of the opposite sex other than their spouse, 42%. Another one-third of the population gave the stamp of approval to pornography, 38%, profanity, 36%, drunkenness, 35%, and homosexual sex, 30%. The activity that garnered the least support was using non-prescription drugs, 17%, end of quote. My friends, do you realize that those behaviors are morally wrong based on biblical principles? Just as God is the creator of the natural laws of physics and chemistry, he is also the lawgiver of spiritual law, and those laws are just as real. One of the themes of the Bible from beginning to end is that obedience to the revealed laws of God bring blessings. Disobedience to those laws brings curses and penalties. That principle is restated this way in Galatians 6 and verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. God created sex for marriage and for intimacy, romance, and love in marriage, and to build a family. God's way is the way of joy, peace, giving, serving, caring, and loving. Some of you or some of your friends or your family may be considering marriage or even planning a wedding. And some of you who have troubled marriages may want to improve your marriage or even save your marriage. To help you in your preparation for a biblically-based marriage, I'd like to offer you this inspiring free booklet, Build a Joyous Marriage. You can have a happy marriage. Here are some of the keys and principles that will help you. Build a God-centered marriage. Heartfelt communication. Learn to forgive. Romance is vital. As it states here on page 28, quote, if sex is used in marriage as a reaffirmation of love, of trust, of the spirit of giving of each to the other, then it is a beautiful and sacred thing in the sight of God, end of quote. This free booklet will give you the biblical keys to a happy marriage. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy, Build a Joyous Marriage. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 
1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. In the first part of our program, we saw that God created sex for marriage and for producing a family. Godly sex belongs in marriage, and it binds husband and wife together in love and intimacy. But the Bible reveals that the relationship between a husband and wife also has a spiritual dimension. If you have your Bible... Turn to Ephesians 5, verse 25. Here we find God's instruction regarding marriage roles and responsibilities. Ephesians 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Just as there's a physical dimension to marriage, there's also a spiritual dimension. The Word of God, the Bible, is cleansing. And Jesus said that we are to live by every word of God. You can read that in Matthew 4.4 4 and Luke 4.4. 4. Now, let's continue in Ephesians 5, verse 28. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Again, we see that marriage is a physical union between a man and a woman. The two shall become one flesh. Sexual activity belongs only in marriage. The marital relationship is also spiritually important because it symbolizes the love relationship between Christ and the church. And yet, according to Barna Research Group, even some religious groups approve of cohabitation. Barna defines cohabitation as, quote, living with someone of the opposite sex without being married, end of quote. The report states, quote, the biggest gaps between Protestants and Catholics were found in relation to cohabitation, deemed morally acceptable by 50% of Protestants and 66% of Catholics. Sexual fantasies, 51% and 63% respectively. And gambling, 52% and 70% respectively, end of quote. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, quote, the increasing trend to cohabit prior to entering a registered marriage continued in 2002. Marriage data for 2002 indicated that 73% of couples cohabited prior to marriage. Comparative data from the 1991 family survey showed that 20 years ago, only 30% of couples had lived together prior to marriage, end of quote. What does the Bible say about fornication and adultery? We already saw that the seventh commandment prohibits adultery. In essence, the seventh commandment also covers sexual immorality in general. Turn in your Bible to Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Here, God gives a positive statement on marriage and contrasts it with fornication and adultery. Hebrews 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. Yes, the bed is symbolic of sexual relations in marriage. Now, let's read the rest of the verse. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. My friends, the Bible is very clear. God created sex for marriage and family. 
Remember, the Bible also reveals that marriage is only between a man and a woman. In the Bible and in the real world of spiritual divine law, there is no such thing as same-sex marriage. The Bible plainly reveals that any sexual relationship outside of marriage between a man and a woman is sin. As we read, God says he will judge fornicators and adulterers. The first century city of Corinth in Greece was a center of worldwide commerce. but It was also a center of paganism, idolatry, and sexual immorality. Many Corinthians repented of their sinful lifestyle, and they became Christians. The Apostle Paul warned them against the temptations of their day. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. My friends, are you practicing any of those behaviors? God says that none of those individuals will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of the Corinthian Christians had repented of those lifestyles and sins, and they were forgiven. The Apostle Paul continues in 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 11, And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Some states and nations are acting as if they know better than God. God defines marriage as a union between a man and a woman. The two shall be one flesh, he says. But many around the world are increasingly supporting same-sex unions. On November 18, 2003, the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court ruled that according to the state constitution, same-sex couples cannot be denied the right of civil marriage. The state of Vermont recognizes civil unions for same-sex couples. The Washington Post, September 23, 2003, reported from Amsterdam that in the Netherlands, quote, as many as 8% of all marriages here are now between people of the same sex, end of quote. A national poll by Environics Research in the summer of 2003 reported that, quote, currently just over half of Canadians, 53%, strongly 28%, or somewhat 25%, support same-sex marriage. These ungodly trends will bring God's judgment on us unless we repent individually and nationally. The enormity of these trends has led a conservative move to amend the United States Constitution. Christianity Today magazine, the December 2003 issue, stated the following, quote, The Nonpartisan Alliance for Marriage drafted the Federal Marriage Amendment, FMA, three years ago. It reads, Marriage in the United States shall consist only of the union of a man and a woman. Neither this Constitution or the Constitution of any state, nor state or federal law, shall be construed to require that marital status or the legal incidence thereof be conferred upon unmarried couples or groups. End of quote. Here we are in the prophetic end times. Who would have imagined that in the history of the world, it we become necessary to amend the United States Constitution to define marriage. Christianity Today magazine commented, quote, Activists say the federal marriage amendment will be the defining issue in the next election. Marriage defenders already have one high-profile ally, George W. Bush. The president declared October 12th through the 18th, 2003, as Marriage Protection Week. It is proclamation, Bush said. Marriage is a union between a man and a woman. It's also interesting to realize, according to one news report, quote, Since 1995, 37 states have passed laws to restrict marriage to unions between a man and a woman and invalidate same-sex marriages performed out of state, end of quote. My friends, we can be thankful for our families and for God-ordained marriages. In 2001, there were 2,327,000 marriages in the United States. That averages out to 6,375 weddings every day of the year. Some of you or some of your friends or family may be planning a wedding. 
Others of you suffering conflicts in your marriage may want to improve your marriage or even save your marriage. To help you enjoy a happy marriage and to help you in your study of a biblically-based marriage, I'd like to offer you this inspiring free booklet, Build a Joyous Marriage. You can have a happy marriage. Here are some of the keys and principles that will help you. Build a God-centered marriage. Commitment and trust. Marriage means giving. And romance is vital. As it states here on page 27, quote, If rightly used within the confines of marriage, sex is indeed a blessing. In a physical sense, it brings about the complete union of hearts, minds, emotions, and bodies of two human beings who love each other so deeply they have committed themselves to each other for life. End of quote. This free booklet will give you the biblical keys to a happy marriage. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy, Build a Joyous Marriage. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. On today's program, we've been discussing the question, Is Sex Sin? As we've seen, the Bible clearly reveals that sex and marriage is a blessing and that sexual contact and activity outside of marriage is sin. In fact, the Bible describes specific sexual acts that are prohibited, including sexual perversion. You can read one such section in the book of Leviticus, chapter 18. In the following chapter, God reveals the second great commandment, Leviticus 19.18. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus quoted that commandment in Matthew 22, verse 39. The first four commandments show us how to love God, and the last six commandments show us how to love our neighbor. Are you willing to obey God and keep the Ten Commandments? Remember, Jesus said in Matthew 19, 17, If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Jesus then stated several of the Ten Commandments. And Jesus himself revealed that we can sin in our mind even without illicit physical and sexual contact. Some religious people think that they can indulge in adulterous sexual fantasies without sinning. Carnal thoughts, including lustful thoughts that obsess about sex, are sinful. Turn in your Bible to Matthew 15 and verse 18. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Jesus also makes it clear in Matthew 5 and verse 28. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Yes, my friends, you can sin in your mind without any sexual contact. In fact, Colossians 3.5 says that covetousness is idolatry. Around the world, various media project sexual images and messages. You need to pray that you don't give in to those influences and temptations. Jesus taught us to pray, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's in Matthew 6, verse 13. How much sexual content do you see on television? According to the Kaiser Family Foundation, quote, In the top 20 shows among teen viewers, more than 8 in 10, 83%, include some sexual content, including nearly half, 49%, that have sexual behaviors, and 1 in 5, 20%, that have sexual intercourse. The top teen shows average 6.7 scenes per hour with sexual content, end of quote. 
The report continues, quote, If you ask teens what role sex on TV plays in their own lives, nearly three out of four say it influences the sexual behaviors of kids their age, and one in four admits it influences their own behavior, end of quote. Yes, the media do influence our attitudes and behaviors. We need to be on guard against those temptations that lead us to sin. Pornography is a booming business around the world and leads many to sexual crimes, including child sexual abuse. In a Canadian study of convicted child molesters, 77% of those who molested boys and 87% of those who molested girls said they were regular users of hardcore pornography. Those of you watching this program who indulge in pornography or any sexual vice for that matter need to repent. You need to quit sinning. You need to take drastic action to prevent your easy access to sexual temptations. The Apostle Paul gave this urgent instruction in 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, verse 18. Read it in your own Bible. 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Do you realize that? Some think there are no penalties for easy sex. But God says that you sin against your own body. The Apostle Paul continues in verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. My friends, I hope that you will make that commitment, if you haven't already, to glorify God in your body and in your spirit. God's way of life is through Christ and through the abundant life, as Jesus stated in John 10, verse 10. God intended that we live according to his awesome and wonderful spiritual laws of love, that produce genuine happiness. And God created men and women to have happy marriages. Be sure to request your free copy of Build a Joyous Marriage. We invite you to join us every week on Tomorrow's World. Roderick Meredith, John O'Gwyn, and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ and the exciting end-time prophecies and their meaning. So join us again next week right here at the same time. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation, if you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. We invite you to visit our webpage at tomorrowworld.org. Produced by the Living Church of God.